recording. And with that, I will turn it over to Dolly. Hi, greetings. So we are very happy to welcome Steve Murray here to do this webinar for us. Steve Murray is a retired Lieutenant Colonel from the Air Force. Currently, he is the Communications and External Affairs Director of the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs here in Tallahassee. He's been in this position for nearly 16 years where he provides oversight of the department's comprehensive public affairs program of community outreach, media relations, branding, and employee communications. He received his bachelor's in broadcast journalism from the University of Southern Mississippi and his master's in administration from Central Michigan University. And we are so very glad to have Steve here with this very important and updated information about veterans benefits, services, and support. Well, good morning. I hope everyone can hear me all right. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this morning on some issues involving Florida's veterans. I know you might have a lot of questions, so please feel free during my presentation to chime in or uh, add a chat box uh, and we'll, uh, we'll answer your questions throughout. And at the end of the presentation, I'll, uh, I'll again answer any questions that you might have. So with that, we'll go ahead and begin the presentation. If we can go to the next slide, please. You know, when we think of veterans in our nation, in our state, we typically think of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And we often think of veterans in the old commercials as being old gentlemen uh, from World War II uh, and, and stuff like that. So almost a stereotype, but that's not quite the case. But the federal government is out there, the VA, and, and typically you think of things like medical care through VA hospitals and clinics. You might hear references to the GI Bill, uh, pensions, VA home loans, and things like that. And all those are all great programs. Those are all federal programs. But each state and territory in our nation also has a state Department of Veterans Affairs. And that's that's my role, the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. And we help connect veterans and their families and survivors with earned benefits, services, and support, whether it be a federal benefit or a state benefit or a benefit that's unique to your county or city. We have lots of different programs in the state that we don't duplicate with federal government because we wanna be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. So you'll find some property tax exemptions, some specific veteran legislation that's passed that only impacts Florida veterans and lots of other things. And we'll go throughout many of those benefits throughout this program. Next slide, please. Our mission for the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, as I mentioned, is to link veterans and their families with earned benefits, services, and support. And in 2022, we have a unique focus on two different groups uh, within our veterans community. Uh, one are women veterans. Do you know that we have more than 165,000 women veterans in the state of Florida? It's a huge number, all the way from World War II veterans to present day. And of course, many women veterans bring unique uh, uh, issues uh, to us, and we want to make sure that we provide all the services and benefits that they have earned as a result of their military service. We're also highlighting this year our Vietnam veterans. One out of every three veterans in the state of Florida is a Vietnam era veteran, to the tune of nearly 500,000 veterans. And because they did not receive the proper welcome home 50 years ago when they returned from service, um, it's right to connect with these veterans, especially as they're uh, beginning to age and their needs are increasing. So we wanna make sure we're, we're getting out into the local communities and making sure they're taken care of. Next slide, please. I mentioned why we serve. It says here that we have the nation's third largest veteran population. Well, we're just about to overtake Texas for number two. 
California, as you would imagine, because of its large population, has the number one population. But because it's so expensive to live out there, uh, we're getting a lot more veterans uh, coming to other states in the Southwest and in the Southeast to include Florida. But half of our veterans in the state of Florida are over the age of 65. So we are an older demographic, but we can't forget the younger men and women who are out there who have served in Iraq and Afghanistan and who currently serve and will need earned services and benefits and support sometime in the future. You see the number numbers here, you know, more than 200,000 from uh, Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm 20 years ago. And then about 234,000 veterans, uh, younger veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan. So we've got to make sure that all of the services that are provided cover everything from the World War II veteran to present day. Next slide, please. And we do have a couple of questions. All right, let's tackle a couple of questions while we're on the slide. Um, and how do I register my SBA with Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, and do you have an ORI number registered with the state of Florida Department of Law Enforcement? This is, is this the same one? Okay. Well, let me tackle those questions offline, and I will make sure that I get individual answers to you. Those are very technical, specific questions, but I will tackle those offline and get those to you. So we'll just go ahead, unless there's another question. All right. So how do you contact us? You must have veterans and family members coming into your facilities almost on a daily basis for a variety of services. And it might be the fact that they can find a, a working computer uh, that has a printer uh, and internet access, or it might be just standard services, checking out books and, and music and things like that, or streaming. So, we found during the COVID-19 period that with all of us working from home, we still had to take care of our veteran population. How do we do that? Well, we came up with some phone numbers that all of our people were connected to, and I've provided them here on this particular screen. So if you call the 7440 number, uh, you know, they will uh, call you uh, same day call you back and they'll find out what benefit or service or question that you might have, point you in the right direction. If you need help enrolling in VA healthcare or just have any question at all about any veteran benefit, whether it be a federal or state or local benefit, these folks are trained and accredited. They're all wartime veterans. And so they've got the good answers. So we'll make sure. If you wanna speak with them, just as we're speaking now in a webinar kind of thing where you can see them on your own monitor at home, they have that video capability, uh, no matter where they are. And uh, most of our folks have returned to uh, brick and mortar places. They're no longer working from home, but the phone numbers still work and they're happy to do that. And then we created an email address and you see that at the bottom of the slide, the VSO at fdva.state.fl.us. And that, uh, that'll be monitored by several people. And it's just whoever the next person in line to answer a question, They'll pop on there, they'll answer your email and point you in the right direction. So we'll come back to this and, and describe the role of our veterans claims examiners here in a few more slides. We have the next slide, please. Florida is blessed to have a network of county veteran service officers. They're trained and accredited annually by my agency, the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. And we accredit them on the latest federal and state standards and out there, legislation changes every year, hopefully to improve veteran benefits and services. And so we wanna make sure that these county veteran service officers uh, have the latest. Strangely enough, this week down in Safety Harbor, Florida, they're having their week-long training conference right now. I was just down there on Monday addressing about 200 delegates from the 67 counties uh, who were there receiving their annual training. So, so good stuff. Use these folks. These people are in your community. They are your citizens. And, uh, and they are county employees, uh, but we train and accredit them annually. And you'll find at the very bottom of this particular slide, uh, later on, uh, you can find uh, the address and phone number, even by name and their email address uh, of all of the county veteran service officers in Florida uh, by that URL link. Next slide, please. 
I mentioned earlier that Florida does not want to duplicate a federal benefit so that we don't double dip our tax paying citizens. And so we provide something unique to Florida veterans in that we have a network of nine state veteran nursing homes. And you'll see in blue on this particular slide, the location of our nine facilities. We have a brand new facility in Orlando that will have an open house on May 21st, which is Armed Forces Day at 10 a.m. And that's the Alvin C. Cash State Veterans Nursing Home. It's a 112 bed facility. And we'll have our first resident uh, here uh, in the next month or so. And then also in the Treasure Coast, the RDR Copa State Veterans Nursing Home, they will also receive its first residence here in the next 60 days or so. And so a total of nine homes, that's more veteran homes than any other state in the nation. And uh, we're, we're very proud of them. The facilities that you see in red on this particular map are our administrative and outreach uh, branches. Of course, the Capitol Office in Tallahassee that uh, uh, monitors things happening in the uh, legislature and the uh, governor's office, the cabinet, and also down in the Tampa, St. Pete area, uh, co-located with the uh, VA regional office in St. Petersburg, so that we're uh, co-located with our federal partners uh, to make sure that we're um, accessing earned benefits and services for our veterans and families. Next slide, please. The question I always receive is, uh, well, how do we get a veteran, a loved one into one of your homes? Well, the answer is you just have to have an honorable discharge from the armed forces of the United States. You have to be a Florida resident at time of admission and a certificate of need by a VA doctor. And that's it. That's all it is. Many, but not all, but many of our facilities also take residents with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. And, and those are tough to, locations to find in the civilian nursing home industry. And so we, we have that specialty care within all but one of our state veteran homes in Florida. So, and there's the contact information. If you need more information, they're provided a phone number uh, that you can uh, use for later on. Next slide, please. You should all have both online and physical copies of this at your location. We publish annually hundreds of thousands of copies of the Florida Veterans Benefits Guide. This year, it's a 40-page full-color guide with the latest in federal and state, and in some cases, county benefits, all the phone numbers, all the mailing addresses, all of the uh, email addresses there. You name it, it's here. It's published annually. We will ship it to you in bulk, free of charge. So get with us after the program or leave something in the chat box. It can be recorded for later use and we'll, we'll send these to you in bulk. Right now, I've got 150,000 in the warehouse. I am happy to share these with you. This is our number one best-selling guide, even though it's free. Uh, but this is the bread and butter for us. And we wanna make sure that these are distributed and available. And we also have these available in the uh, tax offices and uh, the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles for those veterans who are renewing their driver license or state ID card. So there are a number of places that you can get these. All of the county veteran service officers have these. Our own veterans claims examiners have these and all of the outreach um, events that are going on in the state of Florida that we're participating will also distribute these. But please order these from us. We'll be glad to send these to you. Next slide, please. We are heavy on social media. In addition to our website, floridavets.org, um, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, and we have our own YouTube channel. So if you are social media savvy or have veterans and your family members who are come in who are social media savvy, please connect them with all of these resources. All the things that I'm discussing with you now are located on all of these platforms. And especially on the social media, it's more of the up-to-date stuff, events that are taking place or have just taken place, uh, a call to action often in our social media posts and things like that, trying to find 
hard to reach veterans and connect them with earned services and benefits and services support. So, um, so please, please join us in all these platforms, help us branch out and, and find those veterans who we've not touched yet. Next slide, please. There are a couple of organizations that I'd like to talk to you about that are officially sanctioned by the state of Florida in law, in statute, uh, created by legislation several years ago. The first one is Veterans Florida, and they are a nonprofit. Uh, they help veterans and their families who are leaving the service, whether they're separating or whether they're retiring, they want to come back to Florida and they're looking for employment or education, predominantly employment, or perhaps they want to take their experience and become an entrepreneur. Um, Veterans Florida is the outlet for them. There are lots of programs within Veterans Florida that are supported by taxpayer dollars to help those veterans and their family members successfully transition from a military life to civilian life. So this is a great resource. I hope you'll take advantage. I've listed their website and phone number there. Um, they, they do good things. One of the things they also do, they go into other states and they tell other states veterans, hey, come to Florida. You know, we've got a good climate, good economy, uh, and we have lots of programs for veterans and spouses uh, to, and, and children of, of veterans and spouses to come in. And we want you to take advantage of it. We want you to come in and be productive tax paying citizens of Florida. So, so Veterans Florida, remember it and connect with them. Next slide, please. The other organization that belongs to the state of Florida kind of looks at the other opposite side of the end. And these veterans in crisis or homeless veterans or veterans that just need a hand up, just, just need a little something to, to help get them going. And that's the Florida Veterans Foundation. Uh, they're also co-located with me here in Tallahassee, but they're all over the state. I've left the, both their phone number and their web address down there. Uh, and they help Florida veterans and their families uh, in times of financial need. Uh, and they've done great. They partner with a lot of the veteran service organizations that, that you and I think about, uh, you know, the American Legion, the VFW, you know, one of the big powerhouses out there. They'll partner with them to reach out to these veterans who are in need or, uh, you know, really need a hand up to, to, to get them going. So the foundation is there for that category of veterans. Uh, and please use them. Please help connect with our Florida Veterans Foundation. Next slide, please. You'll hear a lot more about this, and I hope you've heard something about this. Uh, over the last several years, we have been focused on veteran suicide prevention and mental health awareness. Uh, First Lady Casey DeSantis has been a strong partner in this. You've probably seen a lot of uh, messaging coming out of her office. We've been partnering with her on many things, but. Back in 2019, we joined the National Governor's Challenge in uh, preventing suicide among service members, veterans, and their families. And we have one of the leading programs among the 50 states and territories now uh, to reach out to work with nonprofits, faith-based organizations, and other, other government agencies to reach out to our veterans community. Um, and so as part of that, uh, we've got the Florida Veterans Crisis Line there. So if you have a veteran in crisis or in need or just need somebody to talk to, there are services available. I don't know if you can see the URL there, but the, the SaveFLVets.org is our Governor's Challenge webpage. It has lots of resources, has some training for people uh, to undertake just uh, an hour's worth of training online just to help identify veterans in need just to you know and how do you approach them and, and offer them services so just you need to understand that we're we're watching this very carefully that we're intimately involved in this and will continue to be and lots of outreach uh, efforts uh, in this regard 
Uh, next slide, please. I had mentioned earlier that our agency, the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, has a network of veterans claims examiners all over the state. And again, I present to you the phone number and email address that you can reach out to these men and women, but they handle all kinds of questions. And I've listed some of the things on the bottom. It could be healthcare information, it could be information on veterans preference and employment, uh, it could be property tax exemptions, and there's a series of property tax exemptions depending upon your level of service-connected disability, if you have one. All kinds of license and fee waivers to make it easier for you to enter the workforce, if that's what you want to do. Um, you know, we can help you with your military discharge paperwork so that you can access uh, earned benefits and services, all kinds of things. Soup to nuts. They, they take care of everything. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is probably the one screen that I want to leave that, that the takeaway from the entire presentation is that there are people out there to answer the questions, train people who every day answer the call or answer an email. Uh, it can be a federal benefit, it can be a state benefit, it can be a local benefit. These folks uh, know their business, uh, and I encourage you uh, to help connect your clientele uh, with our experts. Next slide, please. This is my last slide of the presentation before I take any questions that you might have, but I wanted to leave here just some basic phone numbers uh, for future reference, uh, whether it be our Benefits and Assistance Division within the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs or our Veterans Homes Program, our two big powerhouses. The VA has a toll-free phone number, and I've listed that on any service. You know, we can provide you with that information too, but, but there's, a, there's an extra phone number. And I've listed a few extra phone numbers down there and a couple of website addresses. So, you know, the bottom line at the end of the day that, that no one who comes within your library system who's asking a veteran question uh, should leave without, you know, having some sort of a resource to walk out the door or online to have uh, in their hands. That, uh, you know, there, there's a state agency here to support a federal agency there. Uh, to take care of our veterans and our family members, our survivors, our Gold Star family members. We're passionate about our roles. Uh, this is big business for us, very serious stuff. And, and we want to make sure that we're there for our veterans. So with that, um, I am happy to turn the mic over back to you and answer some of the questions that have come in over the chat. And I've not been looking at those, but I see they've been popping in and any other questions that might verbally come in. So hand it back over. Yes, one of the questions is, will we be able to print your slides so we can keep them at our reference desk? And we will be sending those out um, for everyone. After the webinar, we'll send out the recording link as well as the presentation slides. Oh, Claudia asks, would you share some anecdotal stories about positive cases in which the Florida VA has assisted veterans? One of the questions was to share some positive stories about helping veterans. And I think I think the best way is that we have, as I've mentioned before, we have a network of uh, veterans claims examiners throughout the state. And often they'll get a case uh, that they find out either from the news media or from a friend or a family member of a veteran who perhaps has not applied for a benefit or was denied a benefit years ago for some reason that we can't fathom today. And, and we'll take a look at the old paperwork or submit new paperwork on behalf of that veteran and realize 
that they have a retroactive benefit uh, that they've earned. And we have, and we, we can't have, keep a wall of pride that, uh, you know, there have been some retroactive benefits to the tune of, you know, $500,000 uh, awarded to specific veterans uh, that we've able, been able to punch through uh, the paperwork. Because I'll be honest, you know, a lot of that paperwork is just overwhelming for just an average person. It, any person uh, will take a look at the paperwork and go, oh my gosh. But that's why we have these veterans claims examiners and county veteran service officers. They understand how to process the paperwork, what um, proof of service that you need uh, to, to earn that benefit. You know, they understand. Uh, whether it be a state benefit or a federal benefit, what the qualifications are, they'll help you get the paperwork involved. Yeah, you know, if you can't find a form or something like that, they'll do something like, well, do you have their certificate on, on your wall that says, you know, I received a medal for this? You know, if you can't find your discharge paperwork, you know, take a picture of the document that you got tacked up on your wall that you've been looking at for 30 years, and we'll use that as proof of service and stuff like that. So it's just, you know, not not giving up on the veteran. So we see a lot of that in retroactive payments to veterans in the tunes of tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and that, yeah, but, but it's also sad. It's just like, wow, you know, they probably could have used that money. I'll tell you also, uh, back in about 2008, during the Great Recession, we saw a large number of Vietnam veterans come to us because they lost their jobs and they lost not only their jobs, but they lost their private health insurance. And so they came to us, both the federal government and the state government for the first time really, uh, because they needed health care uh, that was paid for. You know, they earned that benefit. And, and so we saw a lot of that. Uh, you know, I, I hate for a, you know, a, a national calamity to, to get our veterans to connect with an earned benefit or service or support. And that's why it's so important to get out there and we're, you know, whether it be a veteran job fair or retiree appreciation day, or just, you know, we've got uh, some women veteran events taking place in early June in Jacksonville to reach out and connect with women veterans, you know, whatever it is, we just want to make sure that there are things out there that you may not be aware of that uh, is a benefit that can help your life to, you know, ease a financial burden, ease a health burden. Um, or it might just connect you with an education benefit or something else. So good question. Thank you. All right. Last call for any more questions. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions, Steve. Are you? Does anyone want to ask one out loud? We've also got that capability too. No? All righty, well, I think with that, Steve, um, that's the, the trouble with being too prepared and providing all the information people need. They don't ask questions afterwards. <laughs> There's another one. No, here comes another one, maybe. What other local agencies or organizations did the VA coordinate with? That is a great question. Um, you know, for veterans employment, uh, we work with the Department of Economic Opportunity. Uh, for homeless veteran issues, we work with the Department of Children and Families, strangely enough, because all of the homeless programs fall under that state agency. We partner with all of the congressionally chartered veteran service organizations. You know, we were thinking the VFW, American Legion, AMVETS, Disabled American Veterans, you know, those classic veteran service organizations that we've all grown up with and we've all heard uh, from our family members. We meet with them on a monthly basis on a webinar very similar to this. And we exchange ideas and best practices and ideas for legislation to help improve 
uh, access to earn benefits and services and support. So, you know, we all we all talk to each other. We work with other organizations like the United Way and Mission United, you know, and uh, the Fire Watch, the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. A lot of programs out there that we, you know, K9 for Warriors, a lot of these programs out there that we meet with regularly and, uh, and, and, and get out there. We work with a lot of state representatives and senators as they're out in their districts meeting with constituents and, and hosting veteran appreciation events. You know, we'll be there helping to connect, uh, you know, distributing benefits guides and talking to these men and women out there. Um, you know, so it's, we don't do this alone. And we also have a great partnership in Florida with our federal partners. You know, they're, you know, there's seven medical centers in our state, you know, 50 outpatient clinics, vet centers, you know, they have the, the federal government when it comes to veterans has a huge footprint in our state. Uh, but we have excellent relations with our federal partners. We know their leaders by their first names and they know us by our first names. I mean, it's, it's that. We talk constantly trying to make sure because, you know, their veterans are our veterans and vice versa. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're also sharing best practices and, you know, gaps in services and things like that. And often we'll get a call and it just, it's so, it's a federal benefit or something like that, but we want to make sure this veteran doesn't drop through the cracks. And so we'll, you know, hand them off a positive handoff to our federal partners and stuff like that. So we've got great relationships with our partners. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons that Florida is one of the most veteran friendly states in the nation is because, you know, it, it's a mature relationship uh, that continually expands. Good question. I see another one. We're, let's see, think uh, we have a VA hospital here. So there are quite a few veterans living in the community as well as those who travel here to use hospital services. Okay. Great. Let's see, there's another one. I'd mm -hmm. like to know, work with the state legislator, sexual PTSD language for combat, unless the sexual assault happened during combat or prisoner of war. We met Monday in Safety Harbor with the state's women veterans coordinator, Vanessa Thomas, and her team. As I mentioned before in my PowerPoint presentation, um, the year 2022 is a focus on our women veterans. And they just completed a report and handed it on Monday to our executive director of the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs with the idea for future legislation, um, gaps in services, um, and other things that we can do to uh, expand our outreach to women veterans. Many women veterans don't self-identify because they think because they didn't serve in a combat zone or didn't fire a weapon uh, that they're not true veterans, which is not the case at all. I mean, we have a quarter of the state's total veteran population is Cold War veterans but they also are true veterans and they've earned every service and benefit entitled to them. So part of their recommendation to the state um, in their report to our executive director deals with MST, military sexual trauma and PTSD, TBI. Um, and so uh, it's now incumbent upon us uh, to review the report and to spend the next year working with our state legislature to implement the recommendations. I don't have the report in front of me. I can't speak exactly what the recommendations were. Uh, it was just presented on Monday of this week. And I was honored to be there to see the report presented uh, to our executive director. Uh, but you'll be hearing more about this. And I think during this uh, week long conference uh, in Jacksonville, uh, that they're going to start talking about these kind of issues. So hopefully we'll start to do a, a better job of outreach uh, to let everybody know uh, what's happening with our women veterans in this particular topic. So thanks for the question. Yeah, talking about, uh, yeah, they're, they're veterans and they may be a grandparent. You know, we just, there, there are fewer veterans 
And we try to explain this, you know, in World War II, there were 16 million men and women in uniform. And nowadays, even with the reserve and the guards, there's fewer than 4 million in uniform. So we're simply generating fewer veterans as a result. But if you think, well, why are we spending so much time, energy and effort uh, to highlight our veterans? Well, that's easy. Since 9-11, uh, our nation has been generating nothing but wartime veterans. Mm. And so they come with uh, additional uh, concerns and health care issues and a need for services. And especially since they're younger veterans, they want to make sure their spouses and their children are taken care of as they grow up, whether it be an education benefit or whether it be an employment or something like that. So it's important that we... Uh, that we take care of these veterans. And, but at the same time, not forget about our older Korean and World War II veterans are out there. Um, you know, so it's, as I said, soup to nuts. It's uh, the older veteran could be 100 years old or it can be uh, the 24 year old who's coming to us for the first time. Good questions, thank you. All right, your last chance to fire away. But anyway, these slides will be available to you. Please use them. And thank you for what you do. Thank you for connecting our veterans and family members with earned services and benefits and support. Greatly appreciate it. We're partners in this, so thank you. I salute you. Honor Flight, yes. I'm on the board of directors for Honor Flight Tallahassee. Two weeks ago, we just did our trip, 77 World War II Korean and Vietnam War veterans to Washington, DC, all expenses paid, same day trip. They were happy but tired coming off the plane. And uh, that's great. They're honor flights all over the country and there's several within the state of Florida. So if you can volunteer or help out or be a guardian to a veteran flying, I highly encourage it. Great program. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in today, Steve. This has been a, an extraordinarily good, very informational. Uh, webinar and I'm glad to be able to share this on our YouTube channel and um, also on your YouTube channel. We plan to, to send it to you and provide the slides to anyone who's interested in having them. Awesome. Thank you for the opportunity. Proud to be here this morning. Thank you.